those support payments are dicey. It's going to be an interesting conversation talking about like, well, you haven't worked this whole time. You haven't earned any income for yourself because I get that you are financially dependent for a certain period of time, but then you continue to be financially dependent for another 15, 20 years. How helpful is that now that you're at this age and you might be pounding the pavement with a resume? And I'll tell you what's really fun is when you are free from financial burden and you are financially independent and you can say, you know what? I'm good. I've got this. Divorce can be emotionally and financially overwhelming. That's why I'm teaming up with Sonny Wishart, president and founder of Alicart Financial and a certified financial planner. We will show you how to understand all things money without feeling ashamed, overwhelmed, embarrassed. You will learn, learn more, ask questions. No question is a dumb question. Welcome to Money with Sunny. Let's get into it. Welcome to Money with Sunny. Hi, Sunny. Hello. We're going to talk about child support, spousal support, the importance of becoming or being financially independent, and the risks that you take when you count on the spousal support or the child support to, to, to meet your expenses every month forever. Sunny, where do you think we should start with this? Okay, so I had an idea. I thought, let's start with the definition of the two. Perfect. Because we all have maybe our own ideas of what yep. they are, but I'm just going to pull up the difference. Okay, okay. Child support. The money one parent pays to the other to support their children. That's what child support is. So I'm just going to say it again. It's the money one parent pays to the other to support their children so with regards to what that means that can be a whole other can of worms but um and we can get into that in a sec and then i'm going to go on to spousal support definition the purpose of spousal support is to help meet the ongoing financial needs of a financially dependent spouse for a defined period of time so this is for a financially dependent spouse so back to i guess like the and a couple of facts about them, child support. That is money exchanged between the two parents. And it's not tax. There's no tax implications of that. So child support paid out is not tax deductible. Child support received is not taxable income. On the flip side, when you're looking at spousal support, just some fun facts. The person paying the spousal support has that as a tax deductible expense because you're technically paying them income. It's treated like income. Child support is for the children, the end. It's for the children. Spousal support is for the spouse who needs income. So then the receiving spouse who receives the spousal support has to claim that as taxable income on their income taxes. Um, and it, again, it's for a defined period of time. So I'm actually in the middle of doing a plan right now for someone who has a pretty healthy spousal, they're receiving a pretty healthy spousal support payment and it's ending in two years and it's not looking good. This person's going to be 55 and that's the defined period of time for that, that agreement and is going to lose $50,000 a year of income. And you'd think, well, that's a, fairly okay income, but it, it's not. The The lifestyle has ramped up far above and beyond that. Any investment assets are just being drained. And once this stops, I'm not sure. It's going to be an interesting conversation talking about like, well, you haven't worked this whole time. You haven't earned any income for yourself. Now you're going to be 55 and you're going, you'll likely need to supplement somehow, or you'll have to just drastically change your lifestyle, which you're going to have to drastically change. Anyways, that is a massive loss of income. So 
it's a it's really tough because I get that you are financially dependent for a certain period of time, but then you continue to be financially dependent for another 15, 20 years. How helpful is that now that you're at this age and you might be pounding the pavement with a resume? Mm -hmm. So you're 35, 40 years old. You have a couple few children and you're the primary caregiver. Maybe you work part time and now you're transitioning through divorce and, and you're going to be receiving some spousal support. When I work with clients, I talk to them about financial independence. So what that means is you personally can earn enough money to pay your bills and and maybe make investments and all these other things you can do. But you're okay on your own. You can pay your bills. You can make it happen on your own. And if you receive, if you receive some spousal support or child support, the optimum is that that's gravy. You know, that's that's icing on the cake. That is, I think, a better way to go about this. What do you think, Sonny? I mean, I think that's how you should look at things. Well, from what we've probably both seen, those support payments are dicey. They don't come in on the first of every month like a paycheck. They're not as reliable as you'd like to think, as or, or as according to the court, or as your documents, your lawyers did up. They made it look all pretty on paper. But if the money doesn't come in, for whatever reason, that money doesn't come in. So I do like to treat support payments like bonuses because a bonus just depends on if this works out. When it comes to child support payments, my favorite, favorite setup in financial planning is to use that towards actually funding like an RESP um, instead of that coming out of your cash flow. Make sure your kid's education is safe for if that's a goal for you or if your kid is in uh, sports and things like that, funding the expense of sports, put it towards those things specifically and don't bring it into your cash flow to pay for bread and milk and heat. So, Yeah, no, I, I think that's great. So child support is money coming in for the children. Spousal support is income coming to uh one of the parents that needs the income and where are these numbers all figured out who figures out these numbers is there a chart somewhere you can go to is there a website do you have to speak with your lawyer how do people figure this out you know what i actually don't know where they come up with the numbers but i know like it's definitely a lawyer thing um there likely are some aids out there to give you approximate amounts based on each person's income based on the percentage or each caring for the children it's interesting to see when these things happen like you'll see child support payments coming in but that person has the kid 50 percent of the time and the ex-spouse is paying 50 percent of the everything they're paying half of the extracurricular half of the camps half of the medical and then they're still getting child support so like but you're already splitting everything so i it's definitely that's something yeah, and, from, and from what I found is each divorce and each situation is unique. And really, you're in the driver's seat when it comes to creating your separation agreement and your parenting plan and your money organization. This is unique to you. So, yeah, this is a conversation that you're going to want to have with your lawyer. And there may be a chart, but the chart might not work for you. And that's OK. You're going to want to be flexible, come up with an agreement that works for both you and your spouse and your family and your situation. But what we're talking about here is for you personally, transitioning through divorce, don't count on child support and spousal support to pay your bills. Maybe temporarily as you get through the hump and start getting out into the workplace and start building your business or or sell your home and spend less or whatever it looks like for you temporarily okay but within a year or two work towards becoming financially independent and that's something that um, Sunny does every day with people women every day and all the time create a plan create plans She'll take you through different scenarios, look at things from different angles and different ways. It's 
It's not a, it doesn't need to be a daunting, scary, depressing conversation. It can be exciting, exhilarating. You can include trips in your plan. You can include manicures, pedicures, time with the kids. Like, I mean, this is, this can be fun. Look at it that way. And I'll tell you what's really fun is when you are free from financial burden and you are financially independent and you can say, you know what? I'm good. I've got this. I know where I am. I know where my money is. I know what's happening. I have a little socked away for a rainy day. And that financial freedom is, it just, it feels awesome. It really is cool. So any final thoughts, Sunny? <laughs> no, I think, I think you're on this, like Wendy, you and I, we're on the same page with this one that, you know, financial independence is just the key priority. And when you reread the definition of spousal support, it's financial dependence. So it's just saying, I don't want to be financially dependent anymore. Like you say, maybe for a little while. So even if, if spousal supports are coming in to use, treat that as a bonus, supplement your lifestyle, save for whatever, give, think of, you know, what, whatever, but do continue with the financial independence. And I love Wendy, that you're working with women on drilling that home and that's okay for right now to be where you're at, but you know, in X amount of time, it's time to be independent. We got to pave the way for the next generations after us. Awesome. Okay. We're going to check out here. That was great. Great conversation. And until next time, we want you all to know that right now you are perfect. Just the way that you are. You are awesome. You are wonderful, you are worthy, you are loved. And we look forward to talking to you again next week.